episode of the Coaster 101 podcast, and actually the last episode of 2020. I am Andrew Stilwell, and I'm joined this week. We've got a, a big cast of characters. We've got John Stevenson out in Tennessee. John, how you doing? Doing good. Doing good. And we've got Shane up in New England. Shane, how's it going? Uh, it's going pretty good. Getting excited to uh, wave this year goodbye. Yes. And we've got uh, Nick back on the podcast joining us from Ohio. Nick, how are you? Pretty good. Thanks again for having me. Absolutely. So as as I mentioned at the top of the show, uh, it is the last episode of 2020, and thankfully or unthankfully, uh, we're getting ready, as Shane said, send this year goodbye. Uh, 2020, it's definitely been a very interesting year, to say the least. Obviously, there's a little pandemic going on. We're not traveling as much, uh, but we all managed to get out to a few parks, both pre- and post-COVID. This episode, we're going to kind of do a just a recap of our various 2020s as it relates to theme parks and roller coasters. And with that, the top uh, roller coaster news items of the year are two of the big coasters that actually opened in 2020 and weren't pushed to 2021, those being Orion at Kings Island, uh, which, Nick, you went to the Media Day for, and John, you visited later in the season, and then as well as Candemonium at Hershey Park, another B&M Hyper. And Shane, you were there for Media Day with Kyle. Um, But let's go back to Orion for a quick second. Nick, you were there for Media Day. You know, just real quick, what were your thoughts on Orion and kind of how it fits into the uh, Kings Island coaster lineup? Uh, I thought it was great. Uh, But again, that my uh, opinion may be a little skewed just from this year, uh, just because that was the only roller coaster that I rode from between mid February to mid October. But yeah, I mean, you can't go wrong with a B&M Giga coaster. The first drop was amazing. Absolutely love the first drop. Uh, maintains a lot of speed, has good airtime, good lateral G forces, uh, which were uh, really su- uh, surprising to me. And the theming was also a pretty uh, bit of a surprise. It had a lot more uh, theming than I think a lot of us expected, especially in the queue area. There were lots of little uh, Easter eggs. Easter eggs in the queue were uh, really interesting. And there's a there's a great article uh, written by somebody who did not <laughs> ride Orion this year, um, but just got a lot of pictures and did a lot of research. Uh, John, what about you? Uh, kind of same thing as Nick. Or what do you think about Orion? Yeah, it was great. Definitely a good um, a good addition to Kings Island Kings Island's uh, coaster lineup uh you know with it being with two b&ms in the park uh you know with diamondback being their hyper coaster i was a little concerned you know is this going to be just a taller version of of diamondback but it really uh really holds its own well i mean obviously you've got the hype but then as far as after uh, you know everything that happens after the drop is is really just goes in a totally different direction from diamondback and uh nick i was actually reading your uh review uh, from from media day earlier and you referred to those three moments of off axis airtime and i think that was a really great way to put that um those those um moments of airtime where you're the sideways, sideways airtime. yeah it, it's just that that type of that experience that sensation is, is so unlike a b&m so yes, i really appreciated that B&Ms. yeah yeah so i really thought that they they did a great job of course it's too short. I wish it could have been twice as long, but that's just about oh, yeah. every roller coaster. So I think it's uh, it's a beautiful ride. The theming is is really really well done, you know, for a non Disney or Universal park, and um, just aesthetically the color. I it just it looks so. I thought it was a, a home run for Kings Island. Got it. And um, a little bit to the east, obviously, Hershey Park opened their own B&M this year. And Shane, you were there for Media Day for Candemonium. What would you think about Candemonium? Obviously, I know you didn't get to ride Orion. Your expertise in B&M hypers and gigas um, <laughs> is, a li- is a little limited at this point. But what do you think? Yeah, uh, well, it's actually limited uh, to Candemonium specifically. So, yeah, it was my first uh, B&M hyper. Uh, I loved it. Can't say enough good things. Um, I was super impressed uh, with the layout um, and, and just the way the ride looked. Um, it, it fit really well um, into the new uh, section that they built uh, at the front of the park. Um, I wasn't sure how a, a brown uh, coaster would, would look uh, against any uh, landscape, but I was super impressed. It, it looks awesome. Uh, you can see it. Uh, it looks enormous when you're coming into the park because it's right there um, at the front gate. 
but I was super impressed with it. Uh, the clamshell uh, restraints uh, were were amazing. Um, can't wait uh, to ride more um, coasters with that restraint on it. And then the ride itself, um, pretty much perfect uh, flow to airtime all the way through. Uh, there is one uh, off-axis, uh, actually, Airtime Hill, which was uh, probably my favorite part of the ride. It's it's right under uh, the lift hill, and it's it's a great photo opportunity. It's a great moment of airtime. I was just super impressed with the whole thing, uh, with how smooth it was. And, I mean, obviously smooth because it's a brand new ride, but also just, you know, B&M in general is known for that. So Candemonium was definitely a highlight for this year. What about the uh, the theming on Candemonium? I remember seeing the pictures that you and Kyle posted, and it's definitely got some of that that pop art candy feel a little bit. Yeah, there's a little bit of that. Uh, the trains specifically are themed to different uh, Hershey candies. There's some uh, lights and stuff uh, in the queue and around the station, which is cool. Other than that, it's pretty limited. Nothing, you know, to the extent of Orion or anything. Uh, but it's definitely uh, the place that it's in is really nice because uh the whole new area that they built um a lot of the buildings are like brand new like red brick um and the station is also uh looks like that on the outside um so that's really neat and then the inside is just uh super colorful with all the uh candies and lights and stuff so um you know not not over the top theming but i think it works perfectly for that area and for that ride but as coaster enthusiasts, obviously, we had the, the new for 2020 rides, Orion and Candemonium and, you know, Texas Stingray. But our, our personal coaster counts are uh, important to us. And while there weren't a lot of brand new coasters that opened in 2020, um, there were some new to us coasters that we could add to our personal counts. I know I personally, after adding 35 or 40 in the last couple of years, I... Uh, Finished the year with one new coaster credit, which was the Wacky Worm at Adventure Landing in Jacksonville Beach. Um, but Nick, other than Orion, did you get any uh, new to you credits this year? Yep. Yeah, I got a few. So just for reference, uh, last year was one of my better years. Uh, so in 2019, I rode a total of 45 roller coasters, and 32 of those were new to me credits. So as comparison for this year in 2020, I rolled a total of 14 roller coasters and five of those were new to me credits. And the only one new for this year was Orion at Kings Island. Although the year the year is not over, I may get on one more, uh, the new SPF coaster at Scene 75 in Dayton. Gotcha. What were those other four you got on? So I, I count um, Alpine coasters on my track record. Uh, so those the five new coasters to me was Orion. Then I have the Goat Coaster at Goats on the Roof, and the Rail Runner with the, the single rail uh, Alpine coaster at Anakista. And then I also got the Dragon Flyer and Whistle Punk Chaser at Dollywood. <laughs> I love it. So I I should have gotten Lightning Rod was would have been another big one, but it was closed. Lightning Rod's closure I feel like is par for the course for 2020. It's 2020 um, in a nutshell. That's right. <laughs> Shane, what about you? Um, you got you got to a couple of parks this year, right? Uh, yeah, I did. I actually got uh, 19 uh, new coasters to me this year, which is neat. Uh, last year, I got 35. Um, so last year was, was really big. Um, but yeah, this year, uh, again, uh, basically the only reason that I got as many as I got uh, is because for January, February, and some of March, uh, I was in California. Uh, so those first few months, I got to go to uh, Universal Studios Hollywood and uh, Six Flags Magic Mountain. Um, so those two were where I got um, most of my new credits for this year. Um, I also had a trip to uh, Quasi Amusement Park, uh, which is a small amusement park in Connecticut where they have a Wooden Warrior, which is a great uh, family wooden coaster, um, which I had already rode, but the new credit there is the kitty coaster they had at the park. Uh, normally I don't do that. I don't ride, uh, kitty coasters. Uh, not, not that kind of a credit seeker, I guess I would rather ride a uh, ride that I know is good twice rather than get the kitty coaster. But, uh, this year I, I went with uh, some friends who wanted to do it. So, uh, couldn't say no to another credit. Uh, it was a weird one too. It's this, uh, little like steel Alan Herschel coaster from like 1950 or something. So uh, very rough, but I was glad I did it. Um, and then the other credit comes uh, as Candemonium, uh, obviously at Hershey Park. Well, Shane, uh, when we get back to doing Coaster 101 meetups, uh, you're going to realize very quickly that the seven of us <laughs> will 
jump in a <laughs> kiddie coaster at any time. Um, we've done it at Carowinds. We did it at Kentucky Kingdom a couple years ago. We, we embarrassed just, ourselves a few times. <laughs> we line up like the Jamaican bobsled team and just line up in a, a kiddie coaster and take one person per car and just go with it. Yeah. And then, um, John, you were pretty well traveled as well this year. Uh, what were some highlights of your uh, new to you coasters? Yeah, so I was not expecting back in March that uh, I would add ten new credits to my to my list this year. Uh, one of which, of course, is Orion. Uh, that was the only new for twenty twenty coaster on my list. But um, uh, when I went to Kings Island, I realized, uh, despite having been a couple of times in the past, that I was missing several of the coasters there. Um, and then also I hadn't been since, uh, Banshee and mystic timbers open. So, um, I believe I got six, uh, actually seven new credits from Kings Island. Um, and then during my trip to Disney world, I rode uh, seven dwarfs mine train slinky dog dash. And then I actually counted the second space mountain track, uh, alpha or beta. I don't beta. I don't know which one it was, but I, I'm telling myself that I've ridden both of them now, so I guess technically I have added uh, 11 credits to my list. Gotcha. Well, you mentioned Disney, and I know, uh, John, you you went to Disney this fall. Nick, you also went to Disney this fall, and I actually went down to Disney World this past winter, February, pre-pandemic. What were, what were you guys' uh, personal highlights from your Disney trip? I mean, I know... I, I got to take my brother and I saw uh, Patrick Mahomes in the Super Bowl MVP parade, which is really cool. We did the um, the Magic Kingdom after hours, which is really neat. And all these things I'm saying now, which are just the most just pre COVID world things you could possibly do, you know, limited, limited entry at the park, free ice cream, no masks, <laughs> no hand sanitizer, uh, people shoulder to shoulder, four or five deep for a, a parade honoring a, Super Bowl MVP. I mean, it's all very weird to think about that like 10 months, that was just 10 months ago and not like four years ago. But um, John, I know you, you had the Disney trip that was canceled at the very beginning of COVID that you got to take in the fall. Uh, What were some of your personal highlights there? Yeah. So I think the highlight is just in general was being able to go at all because um, like you said, we were, supposed to leave the day before or the day after the parks announced the Disney announced that the parks were closing. So it was really heartbreaking to, you know, spend a a year or more planning um, and getting schedules aligned for, for that to fall apart so quickly. Um, Now I should say, I'm very thankful that that was one of the biggest uh, struggles or, or I guess hardships of the year considering what so many others have been through, but uh, we were able to pull it together and, and go in October. And so just being able to go, of course, it was a very different um, Disney World experience than I'm used to, but we still had a great time. Um, I was really, really impressed with how Disney handled their um, their safety protocols. I mean, I, I did not see my face really for a whole week. Um, <laughs> and they were, not, they were not playing around at all. Um, so I was really impressed with that. But specifically... Some of the highlights, um, one of the under, I mean, of course I love Slinky Dog Dash. I love, um, uh, Seven Dwarves. I love Galaxy's Edge. I mean, there were so many, it had been 10 years since, uh, since I'd been to Disney World, but I think the, the underdog, the surprise hit of the trip was Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway. And, um, it had just opened a very, very short time, uh, prior to the shutdown. And I truthfully had not done that much research on it. Um, I guess I just kind of in the back of my mind, I was so focused on Galaxy's Edge and planning for everything. I, I really did not. Um, uh, I just didn't look into it that much. Uh, honestly, didn't even realize it was a trackless dark ride. And so once it once it got going and, and that trackless component really, um, I guess, became apparent, I, I was just blown away. I thought it was such a well done attraction. I loved its predecessor, great movie ride. But I think this was such a smart step, um, you know, a, a step in the right direction for that, for that, um, building. And, uh, it was just, it was a, 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 a really, really fun attraction. So I think that was one of my unexpected hits of the, of the trip. Gotcha. And Nick, um, unlike the other three of us on this podcast right now, you have children who you yep. took to Disney world. What were your highlights there and kind of seeing Disney? And I know your, your kids are, you know, 
Henry is what six now? Um, he's seven now. So at the, the time of the trip, I think we we were actually there like a week or two after you in February. Okay. So my daughter was almost three, and Henry was six. Yeah, at the time. So that was the, the first highlight was just surprising them with the trick the the trip as well. We booked it at like last Thanksgiving. And so we didn't tell them we were going until we got to the airport. We, I mean, even up up into, on the way to the airport, we're like, "Oh, we're just we got to drop Dad off for a work trip." <laughs> so then we get into the airport, and that's when like, "Surprise, we're going to Disney World." <laughs> uh, so that was really fun to be able to do that because I don't know if even if we go back, if we ever be able to nice. keep it a secret again. <laughs> but yeah, just uh, seeing seeing the parks through their eyes was really cool. And uh, one of the things um, you and I got to do that. John didn't quite manage to do on his trip and Shane got shut out of Star Wars Rise of the Resistance. Uh, what you, what were your thoughts on Rise of the Resistance? And no no real spoilers here just because I know so few people have done yes, it. But, please, you know, please no spoilers. What did you think? Um, I loved it. I mean, I, th- I thought it was amazing. It's a, a full – it's not even like – I wouldn't even just call it like a ride. It's a full experience. Because there's a good, you know, like 10 minutes of stuff that goes on before you even get on the actual ride, ride part. So just the whole like storyline, it's, it's going, you're not just like watching a movie. You're like, you're having a Star Wars experience. Yeah. I'm not even that big of a Star Wars fan and I loved it. And I'm one of those people like I had, I refused to watch any sort of YouTube, any sort of preview. I tried to stay spoiler free on Twitter, but I was there with my brother and he, um, there was a point in the ride, and I'm going to try to be as vague as possible here <laughs> for those listening as well as John and Shane. But there's a point in the experience where something happens to a wall, and I happen to be standing up against that wall. And my brother kind of grabs my shoulder and he says, turn around, you're going to want to see this. And it was just like, whoa, what just happened? So it was, it's, it's very cool. I'm not trying to rub it in uh, your face, John and Shane. I promise I'm not. Um, but eventually the world will be back to normal. You guys will be back at Disney World or Disneyland. You'll get a boarding group. I'm, I'm willing this into existence right now. It's going to happen. Yeah, a low point of my year, definitely not a highlight, was probably the night after we got back from uh, – Disney's Hollywood Studios and I had a good cry over a tub of ice cream and I absolutely went and watched the uh, POV. I had a, a, a slight moment of weakness, but I know, uh. you know I know it'll be <laughs> it'll be it, it'll still be amazing whenever I whenever I actually do ride it. But yeah, that was a, a definitely a, a low point of, of 2020 for me in the right. coaster world. But let's get let's get back to some high points. And I, I guess this is technically a low point because, Nick, you didn't get on Lightning Rod. Uh, but Nick and John, you guys both went to Dollywood this year. Um, and, John, you went a couple of times, I believe. Mm-hmm. Uh, Nick, you went in the fall with your family. Um, Nick, had you been before? I know John goes, I feel like, every other weekend. Yeah, I'd been a couple of times before, but it had been five years since our last visit. I think, I think Lightning Rod was under construction in our last visit. So I've seen it in person twice. <laughs> <laughs> and technically this time it was under construction as well yeah, under construction both times five years apart did you did you uh get to ride any of the i mean you, you mentioned dragon flyer and whistle punk chaser did you get to ride uh, fire chaser express with your kids i don't remember what the height requirement yeah, is yeah and that was that was a uh, henry's favorite roller coaster there he wanted to ride fire chaser all the time and actually my it. my daughter is the the height requirement for that is 39 and she's right there at that right at that mark so she did you know get to ride it once she 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 seemed scared the whole time but i think she liked it yeah i've seen i've seen videos of nora riding a roller coaster that she took at disney and she just she doesn't look like she's having it but she is <laughs> probably in it. her facial expressions are hilarious and john uh you obviously you went for the um so i went for the um actually that was the first park that i went to i went on uh when the park reopened in mid-june and the festival of nations they um, that had already come and gone, which, you know, really didn't come at all. It just <laughs> went. Um, so I was there for the Flower and Food Festival, which is their okay. inaugural f- festival, which, you know, beautiful flower displays, amazing food. Um, and it was just very surreal being back in a park for the first time and road lightning rod, which I did not know would be my first and last of the year um, of lightning rod rides. But uh, yeah, it really, really did a, a, they did a great job with, with reopening and, and getting everything together 
together so quickly. So it was great to be great to be back in that park and look forward to going back many times next year. Awesome. And then Shane, you mentioned uh, your, your January, February and part of March, uh, your kind of semester abroad in the States in California. <laughs> uh, obviously you, you, you mentioned Magic Mountain, but you spent a lot of time or at least a couple of trips to uh, Universal Studios Hollywood, right? Yeah, I did. It was actually, uh, I lucked out because we were uh, staying in downtown LA. So it's only about a 20 minute train ride. So yeah, I, I went there um, probably, uh, you know, four or five times. And what, I mean, as someone who has only been to Universal Orlando, I know very little about the Hollywood park, except that it's got this giant elevator. Um, <laughs> what, what are some of the highlights? I mean, coasters or non coasters at uh, Universal Studios Hollywood? Um, well, yeah. So I also didn't really know that much about it um, before going in. Uh, I've been to the park in Orlando. Um, Islands of Adventure is uh, probably my favorite park. Um, so I was very excited to experience uh, the Hollywood park. And uh, it's it's really great. Um, it's a different atmosphere because um, it, it doesn't really have lands. Um, you know, there's no specific Jurassic Park or Harry Potter, um, whatever. Uh, it, it's uh, just the upper lot and the lower lot, which is, l- like you said, uh, connected by about five or six uh, escalators. Um, but yeah, the the rides are really great. Um, I was really excited to get on. Uh, the Jurassic World uh, boat ride, which is uh, the retheme of Jurassic Park. Um, I thought it was really great. I was a little bit skeptical because um, uh, the River Adventure in Orlando is one of my all-time favorite rides. Um, Jurassic Park is one of my favorite movies. Uh, I also love Jurassic World, though. Um, so I was really happy that one of each exists. It's kind of the same way I feel about uh, the Tower of Terror. There's kind of one that's, you know, the more classic and then one that has similar experience, but uh, updated effects and stuff. So I really appreciated that. Uh, And then I also um, got to experience uh, their version of the mummy, uh, which is different than the one uh, in Florida pretty significantly. Um, which was really cool because that's one of my favorite rides uh, in Orlando. Um, and I was super impressed with it uh, in California. Um, and I also really enjoyed their uh, Springfield, which is the Simpsons uh, land. Uh, it's a little bit expanded, I think, uh, on what they have in Florida. Maybe not so much now because I know they've been expanding in Florida too. Um, but it was really great. That, that I would say, is the biggest uh, actual land that they have besides the uh, despicable me uh, kids area they've got a pretty big land too um, but it was really great uh, and i know eric would appreciate me uh giving a shout out to water world um it topped uh, indiana jones is my favorite uh, theme park show which i didn't know was possible um so that uh, if you go to the park definitely don't miss that uh, and don't miss the studio tour either um even if you're not a, a big movie person um you really like it but me being you know, a big movie person and go into the park um, with, you know, other, you know, geeky film majors uh, like me. We were all uh, really, really um, loving that uh, studio tour experience. I would say that's a pretty much a quintessential point of that park. Gotcha. And you were also out there. You got to experience Six Flags Magic Mountain. Real quick, let's hear your top three coasters from Magic Mountain. <laughs> if, you, if you can do it and if you need to go to, to a top five, you can do that, too. Uh, no, I could probably do it. Uh, my top three, this is, I would say in no order, um, cause I haven't really thought about this, but my top three is, uh, Twisted Colossus X2 and West Coast Racers, um, which is either a 2019 or 2020 coaster, depending on who you ask. Um, but I was super impressed with all three, um, X2 because I love, um, those super like intense like sky rush of course my favorite um so so going on x2 was some of the similar like you know crushing <laughs> intensity at some points uh which i personally like uh and um the rmc uh twisted colossus is one that i've been looking forward to for years uh didn't get a dueling or racing uh ride on it unfortunately but even without that component uh, it's really great 
and West Coast Racers, uh, it could be some of the factor of, you know, it's, it's it was pretty much brand new. So maybe I held it to high regard. But that, that's just one of the most fun rides I've ever been on. Um, that's, I think, the only coaster there that we rode more than once or twice, um, just because for some reason there was never a line. Um, and the ride experience is so much fun. Um, it's definitely the best uh, racing and dueling elements. Um, and another element of, uh, off axis airtime, they got that high five moment right after the launch. Um, that's one of my favorite moments on any coaster. So, uh, I was super impressed with all the rides there, but those I would say are my top three. Gotcha. Um, as far as 2020 goes, um, Nick, I know you mentioned you were talking about the, the coaster at scene 75 and John, you and I were talking off air about the, um, the, coaster at the incredible pizza company or whatever it is in memphis <laughs> do you guys think you're done for uh 2020 yet or are you gonna you know we've only got a couple of days left do you think you're gonna squeeze try and squeeze one more ride in definitely uh planning on trying to get that one more <laughs> sbf visa credit bump my total from five to six up <laughs> love it john are you, are you going to the pizza restaurant what are you doing uh, most likely not you know i uh we just actually memphis just um uh, is is enacting a, a safer at home order the day after Christmas, so I'm not sure how the the incredible pizza will be affected by that. And I think I think I've played with fire enough this year, going to as many parks as I have. So I think I might sit this one out and hopefully wait until the the vaccine is out next year. Gotcha. Yeah, because this, this coaster is about an hour away from me, so that would be such a 2020. That would be such a way to end 2020 is to drive an hour <laughs> to ride a kiddie coaster just to have it be closed. <laughs> yeah. for sure um i just want to like real quick i want to touch on a couple more things that are not necessarily theme park related uh that we accomplished as a website in, in 2020 uh obviously this is part of our you know personal highlights but it's more of a group effort honestly i think our t public shop which um it kind of took off this year with kentucky kingdom starting to tease you know tease or fake tease uh, T4, they're dueling uh, Vacoma SLC <laughs> coaster that may or may not get built. Um, and Jefferson, if you're listening, uh, please build it. It'll be fun. <laughs> but that T Public Shop, I mean, obviously we've got Kyle on our team who's a trained graphic designer, and we've got me on our team who has way too much time with Photoshop to kind of do things. But but when we did the uh, face mask and donating to Give Kids the World and Feeding America, that was a cool project. Uh, people actually started buying our, our shirts and things around the holidays, which I thought was really, really cool. Um, hopefully, if... If you're listening to this podcast and you've purchased something in our T Public shop, hit us up on social media. We want to see it. T Public doesn't tell us who buys it; they just tell us kind of what you buy. They don't tell us where it's going or when it gets there, any of that. But if you've bought something from our T Public shop, be sure to hit us up on social media. Another really cool project that I would like to just talk about real quick is the the fundraising we did this year for give kids the world. And if you go way back to like episode eight or nine of this podcast, uh, we interviewed uh, Pamela Landworth, who's the CEO. And then Stephen Amos, who's the senior director of advancement for give kids the world. And that, that was right in the middle of their shutdown due to COVID. And, you know, in the last week or so they've come up or they've announced a reopening date, which is great. But, you know, we we sponsored their Coasting for Kids event, which was really um, it was really smaller this year than it was intended to be. But we we were a presenting sponsor with that, with Premier Rides and the Gravity Group and SNS Sansa. And then we also raised seventeen hundred dollars through the sales of our calendars. And obviously, Give Kids the World it's a it's kind of a it's a weird part of the industry. Obviously, everybody in the industry it's kind of like a pet charity for a lot of companies, but you know, their mission of treating families to cost-free Orlando vacations, um, you know, families with terminally ill uh, children, so they don't have to worry about what's going on in the world for a week. And kind of, you know, the, the theme of this year has been kind of returning to normalcy. And so Give Kids the World kind of helped provide those kids and their families that bit of normal normalcy. So I'm really glad that uh, we can, you know, play a small part. Obviously, it's not... We're not raising millions of dollars for them, uh, dot, 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 yet. 
but hopefully <laughs> one, one day we will continue to do that. So I just wanted to touch on that and thank everybody who, uh, you know, bought a face mask, bought a calendar, um, donated to the coasting for kids, um, fundraising I was doing. It all goes to a great cause. And so thank you all very much. And the, the last real highlight for us for coaster one Oh one, um, was this podcast. I mean, Shane, you, you and I, and Eric, I mean, Eric's still alive. We haven't, we haven't fired him yet, but, um, <laughs> this started, we've, we've talked about the idea of this podcast. I think John, what, for four years at this point, oh, if, if not longer. Yeah. It's, it's been a, a pipe dream for quite some time. And it was, it became a running joke to the point like, Hey, do we want to do a podcast. And then we just decided, okay, you know, there's a pandemic. We have a lot of free time on our hands. Let's do a podcast. And now we we've made it six months uh, plus. I mean, we've had this will be episode 26, I believe. So we made it um, almost weekly for the entire second half of uh, 2020. And we hope to obviously keep it going uh, stronger in the new year. So to everybody who's listened, uh, if you're tuning in for the first time, if you've been with us since back in June, we didn't know what we were doing. And if you're here with us in December, well, we still don't know what we're doing. <laughs> um, we want to let you know, thank you very much for listening. We really appreciate it. Uh, without you guys, there's really no point, obviously, talking to a uh, microphone with um, some of my friends on Zoom is a good time, but um, it helps when there's people listening, that's for sure. Here's the 2021. So that does it for this week's episode of the Coaster 101 podcast. Uh, if you want to read more about our year in review, uh, text 2020, so 2020, to 419 uh, Not only will you get uh, mine, Shane, John, and Nick's um, recap of the year, but you'll also get Eric and Larry and Kyle and Mike. And um, it'll just, you know, as, as John said, here's to 2021. Uh, it's going to be hopefully a better year. Uh, fingers crossed. As always, be sure to follow us on all social media. Uh, we're at Coaster101 on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Uh, be sure to like, rate, review, and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts, be it iTunes or Spotify or Apple Podcasts, whatever. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, you can email us at podcast at coaster101.com. A quick shout out as always to JM Music Design for our theme music. And Happy New Year, and we will talk to you all next week.